hey besties in today's video we are going outside now there are four main modes of transportation in the university of lincoln the first is going by trains second by bus third by your personal car and four by taxi the one you choose to use will depend on your personal budget and the location you are going to. In this video, I'll be showing you the bus station and the train station. Of course, if you have watched my video about a tour around the University of Lincoln, which I'll be linking up here, you would know that the train station is just opposite the bus station. So in this place, I would consider transportation very accessible. So at the end of this video, you are going to know every single thing about transportation in the University of Lincoln. If you're watching me for the first time, my name is Ada and I'm also known as The Legal Pepe. Do well to stay subscribed because we talk about relocation and lifestyle content on this channel. So let's go. As I never station one thing to note about the bus station is that you don't have to be at the bus station to take a bus it's just that the bus station is like the central station it depends on where you are living for instance because of where i'm living if i want to take a bus i can just go outside and i'll take a bus because the bus passes around some bus stops and if your bus stop is one of such then of course instead of walking down to the bus station you can just take your bus right where you are but one tip to note about the buses is that you have to ensure that you are on the right side of the road because if you are on the wrong side the bus will just pass you by and one tip to note is when in fact let me just give you the tips because there are more than one number one if you want to go with a particular bus take note of the number Every bus has numbers. So don't go and enter bus 6 when you're supposed to enter bus 9. Take note of that. And once you book, you will see all the numbers. Another tip in Lincoln is, once your bus is at the bus stop, ensure to flag it down. That's all you need to do. Just flag it down. That's it. Because some buses would pass you by thinking you're not trying to enter the bus but once you just signal they would know that you want the bus to stop and you want to enter into the bus now once you enter into the bus you would pay for the bus fare now the bus fare just depends on the location you are going to but i would always advise you to pay for a day ride especially if you do your calculations well so let me explain the average cost of going by bus is like let me say three pounds so if i pay three pounds when i'm going and i pay three pounds when i'm coming i have actually shortchanged myself when i can pay for a day rider day rider is a particular bus fare that allows you to go by bus throughout the day without paying anything extra don't worry i will explain so now let's say i'm going to waddington i would pay let's say it's three pounds to go to waddington I pay three pounds then coming back i will still pay the same three pounds that means i have spent six pounds now let's say i need to go to somewhere else that day i would pay another maybe one pound or two pounds or 2.5 pounds but if i know that that day i will do lots of walking or even if i actually may not do lots of walking but i will go to somewhere and come back that same day it would be wiser for me to pay for a day rider and day rider is five pounds so let's assume that all i would do that day is just to go and come then five pounds i have actually saved one pound because that place may have costed me three pounds going three pounds coming and that's six pounds so if you know that you are going to do lots of entering the bus just pay for day rider and your day rider ticket is valid for just that day so just for one day you can't use it the next day 
So when you enter the bus, you meet the driver and you will pay for whatever you want to pay for. So you could either pay for the main journey or you just pay for a day rider. And you can pay by cash or by card. But I think most of these buses actually prefer paying by card. For me, I just use my contactless card and it's just easier. So I just press it and I pay and I move on. So that's one thing to note about being on the bus. Then also, once you reach your destination, you don't need to say, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. <laughs> my Lagos brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about. Once you are at the bus stop, you want to stop. There are always signals that you can press. And once you press it, the driver will stop and you would alight. So that's it about bus. About to catch another fight. Yeah. The apple bottom make him wanna bite. Yeah. I just wanna have a good night. <laughs> systems are really um, efficient here and if they are running late you would be notified on the app most times or you just know about it in the train station so the bus moves within lincoln but if you want to move outside lincoln you want to go to sleaford nottingham or you just want to go anywhere really london you have to use the train train works almost the same way the bus works you can either pay for your ticket online or you go directly to the train station and buy a ticket then you use but i prefer to just do everything online instead of going to the train station but if you just come in newly and maybe you've not had all of these things set up and you need to leave lincoln to go somewhere else you can just pay physically and get it done with so there is no issue about trains in lincoln it just works normally i think the transportation system in the uk is pretty good now the third method is the um, personal car of course i would always say that that is for me my preferred method like once you have your car it just saves you a whole lot of hassles of course there are challenges that go with owning a car because in this place eh, hmm, to buy a car is very cheap like that's not the problem it's not by buying the car because you can check online right now you can comfortably buy a car but <laughs> after buying the car in fact the bills then again parking in short is a whole lot of shebang <laughs> so you have to be financially ready not just to buy a car but to be able to take care of the car and just manage using the car in uk or lincoln so that shows that but of course there are many advantages to having a car because Transportation will definitely be easier. You can just wake up and just go anywhere. So that is about having a car. Then finally, my second preferred method of transportation is using a taxi. For me, I just don't like any kind of stress. So if I can, I always use a taxi. I know we have Uber, Lyft and all that. But let me just tell you, the two popular taxi services in Lincoln are direct cabs and handsome cabs now my preferred is always direct cabs because i have actually used direct cabs more so i know much about direct cabs on like handsome cabs and for direct cabs all you need to do is to book and they'll be there on time when you're done with your trip you just pay and that's it i have never faced any issue using direct cabs so i would always recommend direct cabs if you want to use a taxi but I'll just tell you that if you are on a budget, instead of using taxis, please just focus on using the bus because it's almost the same thing. And for me, I rarely use the taxis because thankfully, all the things I need to do in Lincoln do not actually require transportation, work, school, everything. Like everything is just in one place and that has greatly helped me so if you need to cut short on your um, transportation cost you need to check out all of these little things if you like this video you are definitely going to like this next video on when i talked about how i feed as an international student in the university of lincoln so watch it when you're done i hope i've been able to give you information on transportation in lincoln if you like my content please support me by subscribing if you've not done so already share the content drop your comments hit the like button and i'm going to see you in my next one bye guys <laughs>